Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in the known world. And welcome to another interview with the Crown Between Three Two Roses. It's me and my multiple personalities, B. <laughs> um, I am Candace Lilia Bintazir. <laughs> and I'm Countess Beatrice. And please um, allow us to do our acknowledgements of country, which is a protocol that we do uh, in Australia. Good nobles, we come here together in the spirit of fellowship, deepening of our skills, sharing our knowledge, and a shared interest in the search to find truth through experimental archaeology and historical inquiry. It is in this context that I, Countess Beatrice Maria Malatesta, on behalf of my kingdom, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we gather. We recognize their continuing connection to land and culture, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and elders from other communities who may be here today. And welcome to Baron Thomas and Baroness Mildreth of the Barony of Mordenvale in Lockhart. Hi. Morning, look back in the known world. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question is for anybody who doesn't know, where is Mordenvale situated within the known world? Uh, well, we are, we're obviously in the kingdom of Lockhart. Um, we're on the eastern coast of Australia, about two hours north of Sydney. So Rowanee is our, our southern neighbour and, uh, and Riverhaven and St Florence to our north. Um, yeah, so about, about halfway down the east coast. So beaches? Yeah, beautiful beaches. Yeah, it's a uh, it's very lovely part of the world. Um, and we actually, we, we in fact, we encompass the whole northern part of New South Wales. So all the, all the lovely beaches from Newcastle up to, uh, to Byron Bay and Ballina and that whole stretch. So Hemsworth country. <laughs> yeah, something like that. From now known as. Good to on something that people will understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> How did uh, the barony get its name and device? So, uh, well, we don't have the device behind us. Um, we thought we'd show off one of our one of our new uh, our new banners made by one of our talented artisans today. But um, it's um, so the the name is Mordenvale uh, was basically Black Valley um, was was a just a popular phrase amongst the uh, amongst the very early Mordenvaleans in the in the early eighties, I think. Um, although I do have it on, on good authority and uh, I'll leave it to, uh, to the people out there to tell me I'm wrong, um, that it may have actually been a, an accidental mistranslation and it might actually mean happy valley. Um, but that's, uh, that's all right because, you know, we're a cheerful bunch. We like to, we like to be happy, whether that's, um, you know, with good company or, or good beer, as the case may be. Well, Mort Mortonvale does have some amazing vineyards nearby, doesn't it? So it could be happy valley. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, well, there's it. definitely been a lot of happiness when uh, when I visited there, and lots of laughs for yeah. sure. Yeah, we try to keep people well well entertained, and uh, one of our one of our awards is a cup of friendship, where we make sure that anyone who comes from uh, from another group who is a, a friend of the barony has their cup constantly filled as long as they're within the barony from the, the good brews of our brewers. Hmm. Make, making sure everyone stays cheerful at all times. So, the ship on your device is there a history to that? Uh, it's a good question. Um, we're, we're, you know, obviously we're a trading barony. We have a, a history of, of mercantile pursuits. Um, uh, beyond that, I actually, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but we also, and also the, the cup, of course, um, the, uh, the, the goblet or chalice, if you like, um, on the device is, is again part of our, our hospitality. Um, the colours, um, in particular the red and green, um, we had a uh, many years ago, we had two groups, two, uh, two shires that covered the area that Morton Valley is now, and they, they merged in the late 80s. One of them was had a, had a red dominating um, device, and the other was, was predominantly green. And um, by bringing them together, we, we brought, brought the barony together as a whole. That's oh, an awesome, awesome story. story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, what is. Yeah, sorry, Beatrice, you go. No, I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> No, I was going to ask them about their uh, pinnacle event. What is the event that Mortonvale is most known for? Spring Morn, I guess. It's probably our biggest event, our most famous event with the fighters and drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the bigger wars in, in Loch Hackett's, I think it's probably about the third or fourth largest event in, in the kingdom these days. Hmm. Hmm. You usually get a couple hundred people up there. 
um, yeah, mo most well known for its for its fighting and drinking. Although, um, along with the Barony as a whole, we're starting to encourage more of the arts and sciences aspect of it as well. So there's always plenty of collegia and uh, and other arts and sciences pursuits. We're definitely moving more towards a ANS focus. Hmm. Yeah, it's been going on for yeah, yeah couple, probably ten or fifteen years now. Yeah. Starting to shift away from the fighting focus a bit. Yeah, because I remember when I first started travelling to Morden Vale, it was very fighting dominated. Yeah, we were, we were doing yeah. the grogs as our old fighting unit was known many, many years ago. Um, yeah, that was our, that's a you know, really, really strong part of our history. Um, and we, we're still, you know, we're still some of the best fighters in the kingdom, we like to think. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we, had, we had a crown a couple of years ago come from Morden Vale, so... Uh, but uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, our arts and sciences have really have really come through strongly in particular the last five or ten years. We've got quite quite a good number of laurels and um, a few more that are that are you know doing extremely good work. Yeah. <laughs> so Morden Vale has a very rich history um, within our kingdom, and we have a, a tournament that's held at festival called the uh, the Origin tournament where people basically fight instead of for the group they're living in they fight for the group that they started in and I believe that you have probably one of the heaviest people to enter that like heaviest group of combatants that enter that tournament because is it correct that Mornville was in cumbersome's like uh universities that are in the local area as well so like people who started at uni started in Mornville is that true? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's um, we you know our, our college of St Crispins has been a, a really great leader for for the group for a long time. Um, on the fighting side, you know, uh, we won't name drop obviously, but some of the uh, some of the best <laughs> fighters in the kingdom over over a very long period of time have, uh, have come out of uh, come out of the barony. Why not name, name <laughs> drop? Name drop? Name <laughs> drop? <laughs> uh, well, yep. Yeah, uh, uh, Duke Alpha, um, Sir Edward. Um, uh, obviously, Count Roland still is. Um, you know, uh, Viscount Ragnar is was our captain for a long period of time. Um, uh, Duke Elfin, um, who's is you know arguably a super duke, um, largely in in uh, Dragonfall these days. Um, so Damon, um, yeah, just uh, Sir Bran, obviously, um, yeah, just every, every... Keeps more, sure. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's what I'm going to Oh, that's good. And you have a, a very strong history in service as well, because your your barony seems to have a culture where people are encouraged to try everything before they like decide what they want to do within the society. Is that correct? Mm. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, you know, we, uh, we, we do try to, to make sure that we spread ourselves around in, in terms of, of our, the pursuits of the, the populace. Um, but yeah, that's. I, I mean, I'm personally, I'm a service is a, is a, a core part of, of my experience in the SCA, and we do, you know, we like to think of ourselves as people who who help out um, when we, particularly when we go to other baronies and and uh, sort of help them run, help them them you know run their events and whatnot. So we've spoken about the fighting. We've spoken about the service component. Do you find with the arts and sciences that it's a broad range across the SCA time period or is there more of a focus towards certain time periods? I think we're definitely early period focused. Uh, and I obviously go a bit earlier than all the Vikings. Um, <laughs> but we've had at the, our previous Baron and Baroness were very ANS focused with a with a vikinger, as they would say, um, that's that's their whole game, really. Um, and I think from that has sprung many, many, many A <laughs> uh, &S, um, fans, I guess. A mm. &S doers. I mean, we had our <laughs> yeah the early period in Cam and at festival is is a Morden Vale. Yeah, well, it's, it's it, you know largely Morden Vale. Um, members uh who, who run that and that's they're you know they really focus on on hyper accurate um depictions and, and trying, to, trying to history display yeah. yeah yeah um but you know going back you know a couple of of baronages um the, uh, the later period was was quite a bit stronger um so you know previous to uh to our predecessors 
um, they were they were more sort of late period Italian, and that again sort of you know that helped drive that kind of uh, culture in, in the group as well. So and, you know it, it ebbs and flows over the years. We're regressing. Next will be Roman. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> Just as long as you make sure there is a certain length on the male tunics that they have to heed to. <laughs> No, short set. Come on. <laughs> no, I know. We don't want a black hat version of the Roman the baronage tunics. <laughs> the higher the rank, the shorter they are. No. You want to see our knees? They're very lovely. <laughs> so how long have you both been sitting uh, in the role of Baron and Baroness? Feels like about two minutes. Yeah, a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just say, what, two, two and a half months? Yes. Yeah, not long. Yeah. Yeah. So you're the baby Baron and Baroness of the Kingdom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> still, uh, still feeling our way through it. That's, I feel um, like we should have L plates for sure. Oh, we, we could. Yeah. I, I've seen yeah, a, I've yeah. seen a, a lovely L plate. It was a, it was a Pell's medallion actually. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. We, should, uh, <laughs> we should try to track that down. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Oh, it was the the L plate for the vigil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, Kiara was the last I saw with it, so we'll have to. If, she, if you're watching, feel free to send it our way. <laughs> Done. <laughs> You'll regret that. You'll be getting L plates from every other barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Flashbacks of hammers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an intro. Uh, your. Your step up was a little bit different, really, because COVID hit in a very big way. Because mm. um, your your step up was meant to be in July. Yeah, it's a bit of a tradition to have one of our probably our not our largest event, but our most kind of I guess prestigious event. It's um, is is Tokal um, Tokal um, uh, Token Toy and, and Feast event, um, which is a midwinter theme. Yeah, so it's often it often has a always had a at least one, possibly two midwinter crowns over the years. Um, we've been coronations, I should say. Um, yeah, and that's that's the tradition. And we were, you know, up until about April, we were still really crossing fingers that maybe it had happened, but <laughs> it wasn't to be. Um, no. But I think, yeah, we, we were lucky actually to, to get- 2021. To get, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, we, we were lucky to be able to hold the event we did though, you know, it's, uh, we weren't expecting to, it was, you know, even up to the day it was, you know, is the government going to tell us that we can't, can't kind of hold the events? And mm. it was, you know, massive support from the Senate. Um, so, you know, thank you for your efforts and, and, and Jib as well. Um, and, uh, and Cameron Roland who ran the event. It was um, yeah. just a lot, a lot of work, but. Um, a lot of frustration, I think, <laughs> in yeah. trying to figure out how we can even have an event at all, let alone with all the restrictions. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah, we got, came off. We got there, and it was uh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was I quite I thought it was a lovely event, um, mm. just for the one day. Um, yeah, spring will normally is. Yeah, so spring spring war became spring investiture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. spring yeah. day I call it. You know? Spring day, <laughs> spring day, and it was for for a lot of the east coast. It was the the first event back. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately we, we were numbers limited, and we I think they ended up. They, we reached the cap, so we there were a few people who possibly couldn't make it, but um, but it was yeah we we all yeah we we were glad to see everyone that was there, and we hope they had a good time. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask you your origin story. How did you get started in the SCA? Well, I went to. I started university in 2002 um, and I went to O Week in February and walked into the courtyard and people were dressed in medieval clothes and um, Fred was screaming, have you ever considered being medieval? <laughs> and uh, me and my friend looked at each other and went, wow, that sounds great. Let's be medieval. <laughs> um, yeah, went up and met everyone who was playing at that time and that's my origin story I guess mm. were you the same year yeah I was, I was at the end of my uni career but I joined yeah the same probably the same day maybe um I had a had a friend uh, who I'd known for a long time who'd been playing in the SCA for a few years um uh, Lord Balthazar if anyone remembers him um not to be confused with the current Lord Balthazar that we have at the moment different guy uh, equally awesome um 
and uh, yeah, he basically he told me about about this this um, crazy bunch of nerds, and I, I hung out on the <laughs> on one of the ovals that that was down there, and honestly, they were the coolest nerds I'd ever met. Um, <laughs> And, I found my people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we had, we had the newcomers event a couple of nights later and, and went along and and uh, brought possibly too much wine and got nicknamed Bacchus, um, <laughs> that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was a bit of fun. <laughs> nice. yeah, I think that's, that's, that's all I'd be willing to tell on camera. Oh, you're no fun, Bacchus. Well, well, so, yeah. when we stop recording we'll fill in the rest <laughs> so around the campfires you know our audience can just go up and and say so what were those stories yeah mm. <laughs> all right well again <laughs> yeah, may, may regret saying saying what i've you know well, let's let's thanks b <laughs> no worries <laughs> fly them with wine and hope they <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> yeah, it tells me more so, than you met in the SCA? Yeah. 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 So, well, I guess, yeah, that, yeah, within a few days of, of both of us joining, yeah. Probably was that day. Yeah, maybe well. I yeah. feel like there was like a, a dance practice that night as well. It was like, mm. join up, all right, come along, like, you're one of us, <laughs> come yeah. and do this thing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 We didn't get together straight away. No, that, that, that took a little while. <laughs> <laughs> So a friendship developed and and then it just progressed. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we um yeah. we sort of we we you know both sort of stayed in in different parts of the SEA and obviously saw each other um you know a lot. Morton Vale has always been a really kind of well connected group. We always we do a lot of very regular you know gatherings and and dance practices and, and that sort of thing quite quite you know at least weekly um often mm -hmm. more more frequently than that. So yeah, it's definitely saw a bunch of each other each other and. Uh, yeah, I uh, had a long hiatus, and then yeah, you, 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 and then you dragged me back. Well, that's right. You need, <laughs> we needed you. <laughs> and look at you now! Yay! Mm. Nope. Oh, don't get uh. on camera. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no. keep, keep, keep the PG. So, what are your personas? Mine is well, I do. Uh, Sixth century Anglo Saxon. Um, kind of originally wanted to be sort of Northumberland, like kind of northerner, and I'm slowly going southerner, but same time period. Um, basically, because in the south they had uh, fancy addresses, and I just want to be a little bit more shopping. <laughs> um, There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so Mildred Thomas' wife, I think in the sixth century, Mildred wouldn't have had. A by name, but to register my name, I needed a by name. So I went a bit later with the by name, but still within the cutoff. Um, and I just went with Thomas' wife because people were literally meeting me and then saying, Oh, you're Thomas's wife. <laughs> and because they knew him as Thomas, not Bacchus, because they knew him from being the Reeve. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was quite fortuitous. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you drank a lot of wine. I did drink a lot of wine. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that's the basis for a strong persona. Um, but then, you know, obviously, <laughs> building some structure around it. Um, I, you know, I, I guess for a long time I was sort of middle period English, um, so twelfth century kind kind of ballpark. Um, that's you know, uh, you know well documented kind of name as well from that period. Um, but then more recently, I've, I've definitely drifted towards the early period under the influence of of uh, Her Excellency here. Um, and it's just, it's really interesting. I find that the early period stuff is is really fascinating. And, and it's not, you know, when you go a little bit earlier than, than the Viking era, it's it's um, it's probably not as well explored in the SEA. Um, so, it's harder to explore. And, and, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, there's, there's not as much evidence, which is a bit freeing too. You can kind of, you, know, you can be a bit, a bit mm -hmm. open in, in what you what you do. I picked sixth century specifically because we went to the British Museum. And I was already thinking about early period stuff because that's sort of what the group was doing and I liked the aesthetics of just lovely fabrics and sort of a authenticity to focusing on the materials over any really fancy seam construction and, <laughs> and uh, like I wanted to do early period but I really didn't want to do Viking just because it was so common and 
I feel like it had just been done a lot. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but <laughs> and I just sort of was like in this weird headspace. And we were at the British Museum, and I saw these like brooches and like a little picture of a woman in a peplos, and I was like, "That's it. That's what I want to do." <laughs> so, thank you, museum. <laughs> Encouraging history. Yeah. I have to say, talking about the name association. I never realised that you had two names. It was always Bacchus. <laughs> That's just Bacchus. It sort of is. <laughs> so somebody will say Master Thomas. I'm like, who's that? Bacchus. <laughs> oh, it's just From Bacchus. Another kid, really. yeah. Master Bacchus or Baron Bacchus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you have an evil <laughs> Pretty common, I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it started to shift when I was ex-checker because I always, you know, I kind of introduced myself as, as Thomas to a lot of people um, and that started to get a bit of a groundswell and I'm really trying to suppress that now. That's just that's strange. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't make me register another binary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to that. That's interesting. It's only a step from period practice. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Looks like as a very out. young, yes, as a very young uh, baron and baroness, how are you engaging with your popular moment in the endemic times? Because a lot of people obviously are doing things, but what are you doing to connect with your your barony? Yeah, it, it, I guess it's challenging. Um, we're not, we haven't been doing the regular catch ups so much. Um, the fighters are still are still doing our regular fighter training, which has been great. They've been going since June. Um, we're probably mostly, you know, there's been some some online activities happening. Um, so early on in the in the pandemic, um, there was regular Friday night sort of sort of catch ups on on the Blockade Discord, and that was great just to just to see how people were going. Um, and then more recently, uh, Baron Dallin's been running um, similar sort of things on a Sunday morning, which has been really nice. Um, so those have probably been the the best ways to engage with with some of the populace. But clearly, mm-hmm. online stuff doesn't. Not everyone can can sort of take in that, and so we're we we right now trying to think of ways that we can, you know, bring bring the barony back together and start getting us a bit more active for some of our some of the participants who haven't been able to engage through that mm-hmm. sort of well, stuff. There's some people who don't do they just don't do online stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. So in fact, some of our some of our you know longest serving and, and really you know you know core members of the barony are, um, we haven't really seen much of. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping we we can kind of tempt them back with with maybe some mm. some gatherings on a Sunday again. When it's not quite so hot, maybe right. it'll pick up we a little bit. <laughs> don't <want> people <laughs> melt. Yeah. Maybe you need to run one of those grog pants, like arts and sciences nights where everybody makes baronial pants. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's just not as many grog pants as there used to be, and, I'm a, and that's a shame. You, know? <laughs> you should get Ragnar onto that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that's again, what he do you relive history? <laughs> uh, we we know how much he loves arts and sciences, so yeah. <laughs> I think if uh, yeah, if we if we asked him to help, he would jump at it. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been in the SCA for a little while. What would be one of your proudest moments? Um. For me, I, well, hang on, let me think. Uh, I don't want to say something wrong politically. I've got stepping up as Baroness. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good choice. <laughs> I, my, my heart was going to say um, the first year at Rowany, uh, where I won the costume competition as a beginner with my first uh, early period full mm. outfit. Um, and not so much because I won, uh, it was, there was this moment after it was all done and I was really nervous to do it. And so I'd sort of had to like really pump myself up to go up and talk in front of everyone and show off what I'd done and a bit afraid that maybe everyone will be like, oh, that's not very good, you know, and just all that sort of stuff. Um, and then there was this moment when we broke after the whole thing was finished and we were free to go when all these people came up to me and they all came up to me at once and they were like oh we really liked you Jess can you tell me about it can you show me this can you show me that and just like I just in that moment felt really 
welcomed, I guess, into like the group of like ANS people. Like it was, yeah, it was a really special moment for me when everyone came up and kind of talked to me about my stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll pick that. Yeah. A lot of time now. Thank you. Yeah, no, I've <laughs> and I've come up with about with about thirty options. So let me just I'll make a mental note. So yeah, sit down. Um, so uh, pro like for you know for for personal um, reasons, uh, obviously our investiture was 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 wonderful, and and I guess in a similar vein, um, my uh, elevation to the order of the Pelican um, a few years ago was was obviously a really you know um, important moment for me, but um. Pro, you know, proudest. Uh, there's a time back in the very early days after, I, probably two years after I joined the SCA, um, it was a spring war and uh, we were, we, there was a war muster going on. So um, all of the, the groups were marching off to war. And at the time, as, as we said, Morden Vale was very much a fighting barony. That was, that was part of our, our you know, culture, who we were, our, our identity. Um, and we had a, we had a really a very large war unit. We probably had uh, thirty or forty people um, running the gamut of, of sort of you know a couple of shield walls um, with with pole arms and um, and a stack of archers um, and just watching these forty people in ranks of two, just this en enormous length uh, line of people and uh, and Ragnar was at the front of it and he yelled Mordenvale and the whole group just sort of just yelled huzzah and you were one of them actually you were on that on that thing and that just it really stuck in me just. Light. It was, uh, yeah, it, it was a really just uplifting moment to show uh, just the kind of how, when the barony comes together, um, how, yeah. how impressive it can be. It was really, yeah, just has stuck with me for a long time. Wow. And it's important. Like, we, um, we don't have other kingdoms to compete against in lockout. And so we take so much pride in our baronies mm. as our groups. Yeah. I, um, I I I understand completely how you feel in that. Yeah, no, it's, it, was, it was beautiful, literally. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> I think for like both myself and B have a very um, soft spot for your barony for many reasons, <laughs> um, but for me, when you get a spring ward, there's and and you watch Mordenvale, it has a very tight knit community where other groups tend to fraction off into households. Like there is households in Mordenvale, but there's also a very strong baronial passion, for mm. want of a better word, that that I love watching. So yeah, it's I, and part of that I think comes from that that connectivity we always had. As a as a as a fighting barony, we always had that as a, a thing. We always came together as a as a barony, even even though there were a couple of fighting households uh, at the time. So Company of the Rose and Altdorf are probably the, the more prevalent. Um, even they were always still you know fighting as part of Mordenvale. Um, and even though that was you know 15 or 20 years ago, that I think that connectivity has really stuck. Um, and and yeah, we I think um, the the passion for the group is still still very much alive. Yep. Yeah, because generally you, like, fighters will generally bond together, very much so, but to bond all of the non-fighters together as well within that barony is quite a, an impressive feat, really, because mm. it's something that that some some areas do struggle with. Mm. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's a, a, I wouldn't say a different approach, but it's just a different outcome. Um, for our group and, and other groups um yeah it's it's although i say it's it's kind of driven by the fighting originally it's it was never exclusive to the fighting it was you know e everyone felt part of that that identity mm. Mm. lots of screaming Warden <laughs> Vale huzzah yeah which is yeah is, is is beautiful possibly not in the middle of court this has happened a few times um Other me. yeah well, <laughs> 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 Again, not going to name any names on that one. <laughs> no, no, that's good. No name dropping on that one. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. The fashion. That's right. Yeah, that's unexpected. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's expected. Well, bubbles up inside and has to explode somehow. So. <laughs> exactly. And it's hard to get through a long court, you know, without letting it out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. So my next question for you is how 
are you planning? What are you looking forward to when you get back? We all get back to some form of normality. Mm. We keep As saying we'll have a revel. Mm. We haven't had just a good old fashioned revel for a yeah. long time. We do like to party and it's just like been a while. <laughs> yeah. Post COVID revel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, again, that getting back to that regular activity, I think is, is, is going to be really, um, really nice. Just the, you know, we miss people. We miss seeing everyone. So, yeah. um, you know, we've had a few little kind of gatherings where we've had maybe a dozen people, which is, which is great. Um, but there's still a lot of people we haven't seen. So I'm looking forward to getting, getting everyone back together. Yeah. Something regular. Yeah. Mm. And um, we've been talking about, about having a few events outside of the Newcastle area. So oh, going yeah. to some of our, our regional areas where, um, where we don't, again, like we've got, you know, little groups of, I shouldn't say little, but you know, groups of, of fairly active people who we just don't see that often. So we're hoping to, to get out and give them a bit of support. We're so big. Yeah. Like the Barony is actually so geographically big mm -hmm. that some people are making this huge effort to drive really long distances mm -hmm. to come to a gathering, you know, yeah. that might not even be that exciting. So we want to kind of take the, take a bit of the exciting stuff to them. That's the idea. Yeah. As soon as we can have a big enough event, mm. I think early next year. Yeah, sounds good. Fine. That's awesome. It's um, there's there's definitely a lot of groups that have that the the regional players, and it's probably not the right word for it, but um, some of the barons and baronesses that we've spoken to definitely have those those people who are not close to the barony is like two, three, four, five hour drives mm, yeah, exactly. for them to travel across. And yeah, it's having that support and people actually driving out to them is so nice. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And they, they do make the trip down here like really often. So it's yeah. just, you know, it really is time for us to yeah. give, give them a bit back. Yeah. Yeah. And have a party. Yeah. <laughs> have a party. Have a revel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll drop in in the doorstep and just kind of say, "All right, we you know, here's some beer. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go have some beer. Have some A and S stuff. Yeah, yeah also A. Well, the, but the brew, the beer is brewed too. Um, we yeah. do have some of the best brewers in in or, or many Actually, many excellent brewers, I should say. Yeah, Mortonvale is <laughs> is known for their brewers. Mm. Yeah, you even so, have an event, don't you? Yeah, we do rhythm and bruise. That's right. It's uh, you know, ent entertainment, entertainment of varying sorts, and, uh, <laughs> and the beer flows freely, and not just beer. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, everyone should come to rhythm and bruise. It's a great event. <laughs> Are we allowed to run? Ah, yeah, fine. <laughs> no idea. Um, <laughs> but then we, yeah, even if it's not next year. 2022. Yeah. 2022, Rhythm and Brew. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how things go next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, awesome. there's there's some movement around on things, so you never know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting. So I want to ask you about the Morden Vale um, Awards. You did mention the Cup of Friendship. Mm -hmm. um, what other awards do the Baron and Baroness of Mortonville get to hand out? And is there any particular award that is special to you? Um, I personally, I've, uh, uh, the, the Baronage prior to our predecessors came up with the Green Feather. Um, and it's, it's essentially a, um, a welcoming into the Barony. So for newer members, um, when they, they start to, you know, become, become part of, of our group, um, we like to, to let them know that, that they're important to us and that um that uh yeah that we you know we value their their um their willingness to to come be a part of us and uh and the, the previous baronage had uh had sort of developed that in line with their personas they called it the raven feather mm -hmm. um and uh we're sort of we're thinking about um about changing it again what, well, whether whether to change it, you know what, what what might suit us um, i have but i have plans that i will not divulge <laughs> <laughs> I want I I want it to be a little bit of a surprise for the the first one mm -hmm. that we give out for people to be like wow. So don't tell them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, no, okay. I mean, sure. I mean, the format of it. <laughs> It'll it, it's just between us. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's, yes, that's probably 
That's mine, I would say. Go oh, yeah? Them. I mean, we've got, there's a few others as well, but that's my favourite. Jade Annulet mm -hmm. um, for A&S. I like that one because I got one. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Um, it's also just really nice. That's our A&S mm. um, What else do we have? The Unfurled Limb Fad mm -hmm. is our service award, um, which mm. is a unfurled limb fad. The, the boat, as we talked about before. <laughs> um. The boat. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Fighting red cloak. Red cloak, yeah. Um, they, we've got, there's a few, possibly. We've not, how, how we've not we been have? allowed to give yeah. out any awards yet. Oh, or we've true. not had occasion to give out any awards. Yeah. But soon, yeah, we've got, we've soon. got, we're making a list. Are we checking it twice? Checking it twice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> so your first event back is going to be a bit of a long court. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Mm. Bring, bring beverages. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll bring beverages. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, you have we'll, brewers. We'll exactly. engage our artisans to yeah. beverages. <laughs> I'm really giving a bad impression about marrying. Um, you know, we do other things than drink, I promise. But that, well, see, for me, that's how I met Morden Vale, really. <laughs> I went to Spring War and drank, and then everyone else was drinking and got along amazingly with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's keep, keeping people happy, keeping people reveling. Yeah. I think Spring War was my first event in Mordenville too. I went down to fight and I got to see the Bardic Circle and the communal like feasting hall and like uh, and Talbert running the showers and I was just in awe. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> We're a very industrious barrier. You know? <laughs> Those showers were a marvel of engineering. I have no they idea. They really how. were. Even today, I don't know how he set up the curtains. He, he showed me half a dozen times. <laughs> it, it just it works. <laughs> and then it's... years later, you got to see the like the the black working, like blacksmith working, and you know, and the tournaments started getting like more prominent. And then there was the incident with the fighting snakes on the war field. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. Not, not, oh, everything's a learning experience. It's not always yeah. fun. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> so, B, do you have a question or can I ask another one? You can ask. I want to know who are your heroes in the SCA and who inspired you to become the Baron and Baroness of Mordenvale? That's a tough one. We've got some, like, there's so many people who just amaz like, do amazing work. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, not, not necessarily for the Baron and Baroness, but um, I've always been, been very inspired by Mistress Sonia. Um, she was, um, she was a, something of a mentor to me um, back in back when uh, when she was treasurer of the board, and um, the amount of work that she put in over over you know many years and continues to put in is 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 always really just absolutely incredible. Um, dedication, it's just amazing. Gosh, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll say another yeah. one. Um, Baron Ragnar, um, you know, he's from he's Morden Valley and. Um, he was the, the captain of Morton Vale's, um, you know, back, back when I first joined and has always been a, a really core cool kind of, uh, uh, is, you know, part of part of the barony for you know, 30 years. Um, he is inspiring. He's incredible. He's just, mm. yeah. It's um, so hard to pick one person. I know, right? Thanks, <laughs> thanks guys. <laughs> I, have, I have two pelicans who took me on as their protege and, and a laurel who took me on as a student. So... I would say those three, Countess Lilia. Um, don't know if you know her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's um, some random, I'm sure. <laughs> and I have another Lil, um, Baroness Lillian, and uh, Arg. Baron Gilbert. Baron Arg. <laughs> um, to, become to become Baroness, I wasn't 
really sure that I really wasn't making a terrible mistake and that I really wanted to do it. I think Ugg probably was the yeah, person was who really twisted my arm uh, with encouragement yeah. and just Good. kept saying, you can do it, I believe in you, you can do it, I believe in you, until I sort of cracked and went, oh, maybe I can do it. Mm. So, uh... yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, Gilchrist and Lillian were, were the second Baron and Baroness of Mordenvale, um, mm. and they, they were the longest serving Baron and Baroness. They were spectacular during our formative years. Well, certainly my phone reviews um they were they were leading the baron in the shows and yeah it, i would definitely say the things they did have set me up for for how i want to how i want to be a baron as a baron yeah hmm. thank you <laughs> so being so new into the baron edge what advice would you give to people don't don't be don't be too terrified, you know. To it's, new um, barons and baronesses? Well, people who are thinking about it. Oh, it, yeah, don't be too terrified. Yeah, it, it's, it's it, not that bad. It, it seemed really <laughs> intimidating, um, you, know, we, you know, when we were sort of, you know, putting together our um, our proposal to the barony and, and, and to the scary. crown. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, is, it is quite scary. But um, once you're in the role, you, there's, there's Im immense support um, yeah, you know, I people... think from the outside you don't see how much support there really is mm. until you step into the role and you realise, oh, I'm quite supported yeah. in this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we every everyone wants us to succeed. It's um, yeah. It's, it's it, you know it's what it help it's what helps the barony kind of come together. So yeah, just don't don't be afraid. You know, you can do it. Having said that, we were very afraid. Oh yeah. So we still sure. <laughs> 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 We'll see how, how our, our first, our first oh, solo event goes. Let's see. Not scared, you're scared. I get, we should take our own advice. We're going to have a lot of support. Sure. Everyone's going to come together. It'll be great. Yep. Very and it's much. all about having fun. It's That's enjoying it. what you do. Yes, remembering, I guess, that we are here to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been so a rough year for that. <laughs> So on that note, that is why we ask everybody that we interview, what is a story that they can tell, it doesn't have to be PG, about their, around the, the campfire that they tell about their own mishaps or their own adventures, so that we can all remember the fun that we've had in the SD <laughs> and we will start again with a new story in the new unlockdown period. So what is the story that you would tell about yourself around the campfire? Uh, I, I've got a quick little one back when I used to fight. Um, I was uh, I was in house outdoor for at the time and uh, we had, uh, uh, so, uh, so Boris was the was the leader of our household and leader of our fighting unit and uh, he thought that I was fit and that's really weird. I never understood that um, but he would you know, I was the guy who would run off to, to chase the archers. And so we had a, res a resurrection battle and there was four or five people in the shield wall. Um, and then me as the kind of the, the, the fighting sniper, if you like. So I'd run off, they send me off to, to get archers. And I'm not fit. I'm really not. I'm very slow. And I'm even slower in armor. Um, so he'd send me off to get an archer and they'd shoot me and I'd die. And I'd go back and res. And he'd send me off to get an archer and they'd shoot me and I'd die. I died about 50 times in that fight. And I, I think I got fit by the end of it. Um, it, it was just it was embarrassing literally oh. um, it's funny that you say you were chasing archers because that is my memory of fighting is being an archer and running away we loved running away yeah. we ran away so much we would run away giggling ah <laughs> what in the back I of the head <laughs> um i can't think of a specific story Tell me, husband, have I done anything noteworthy? <laughs> it wasn't, didn't have to be PG, right? We can. Uh, it was a night at festival. Uh, uh. <laughs> it was one time at festival. Yeah, All right. this stuff happened. I wish I prepared something for this. <laughs> so we might come back to this. <laughs> sure. He, he says, hoping that we absolutely won't. Oh, mm. I can't think of a good story. I'm sorry. <laughs> so 
Do you know that I'm a perpetual guard of your barony and nobody has actually stood me down yet? <laughs> oh. Oh, fantastic. Cool. Uh, again, with things you probably shouldn't tell people on camera. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for renewing your interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was many, many years ago and um, Lillian and Gilchrist were Baron and Baroness and she was making those lovely... Um, double co colored coats with this gold mm. buttons down the front. <laughs> and I said to her, how do I get one of them? And she went, you become a god. And I went, awesome, I'll become a god. And she went, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she went, You'll get a coat. And I got a coat. And then when they stepped down, they didn't actually let me go. And I went, oh, okay, cool. You know, and then I, I, the next Baron and Baroness, I've kind of gone, uh, I haven't been stepped down and they kind of went, oh, well, you can step in whenever you want. And I went, awesome. So there would like be things happening in the Mortonville coat. Now we just step in behind them and <laughs> go, I can see things. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And that is, that is really good to know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, we can have, have to travel to my, to the lands that I live on. Obviously yeah. you have a guard here. Beautiful. We're established. Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We like to more outposts around us. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. You know, it's it's about ensuring that the barony is is protected and and safe. And outposting yeah. all of your guards is not a bad idea. That's right. That's right. Yeah. There, there's been a bit of a history of of tension between Mournvale and some Florians in particular. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, just if you could keep an eye on them. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, we trust them. Obviously, we trust our cousins. They're lovely people. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Bee, do you have a story about Mordenvale that you can tell? That's the part that everybody goes. <laughs> All of my stories are generally this one time I was drunk. <laughs> I, I find that very relatable. <laughs> so and then I was when when I was queen, um, we we had the event. It was spring war, but it really was spring court because Morden Vale didn't have a hadn't had a royal visit for two years, mm. and uh, there was an investiture, and we ended up with three elevations. Oh yeah, I remember that. Well. Um, so, because we stepped um, Gilchrist and Lillian down. Mm. And it was late at night, and this is a story about Lil. You just so I stepped it. Lil down, and I, uh, I asked her to be one of my guards. And I had the traditional... This is not walk. selling me to the Baron and Baroness as their guard, by the way. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so I had... Um, I had given all of my guards a baldric and a pouch. And so I, she's received that in court, stood behind us. We dismissed court. That was all done. Standing out near the list field. And all of a sudden I hear this little bit of commotion behind me because Lil was playing with her baldric. And, and there's a ring at the end of it. And she got her hand stuck in the ring. That's Lillian. Not, Not one. Exactly. <laughs> You'd think she'd learn. But no, a second time she did the same thing. <laughs> you just need to make sure that it wasn't something she did wrong the first time. You know, she was exploring. Uh, and that's why Lil was my guard. She didn't fight. She was definitely there to protect my honour mm. and, uh, and much entertainment. You. That's right. She makes sure that you know what not to do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And showing my guards what not to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Keeping, keeping the guys in line because our queen, England, was the captain of my guard as well. Oh, so yeah. I, I, had, I had the, you know, the girls were keeping the boys in line. <laughs> as is good and proper. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she's, uh, no, she's, she can, she's a bit uh, accident prone, I guess. I've never seen anyone who cuts themselves as often as, as, as Zoe and she's, she just she's again and again it's because she's so dedicated to making sure that that uh, whatever she whatever needs to happen happens and, uh, and often that involves blades. Um, yeah. It's yeah. We we need to stop her letting touching knives. I think. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that she was just testing out the size of the ring hmm. on the end of the baldric to, to make sure that, yeah, it, it fit. Mm. Yeah. Up to the wrist or? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just the fact that she couldn't get her hand out of it. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> How about you, Lil? Uh, I would have to say the level of support that myself and Brian got at our elevation from the Barony of Mordenvale still is one of my dearest memories of the Barony of Mordenvale and through our reign as well. There were several things that made me realize that there, that Mordenvale was a big family for us and I loved it. Um, at our step up, um, Mordenvale turned up, my, my husband was an early Celtic <laughs> Pictish um, character who wore tartan and all of Mordenvale turned up in tartan of their barony, which isn't tradition like normal. They actually bought out a high school uh, uniform tartan that <laughs> there was a lack of it in the local area. So that, that was just that moment of turning up and seeing everybody kind of support your elevation was amazing. And then there was the Mordenvale Mo, <laughs> where when Bran grew, what I like to call is the ugliest period mustache known to man. <laughs> uh, Mordenvale turned the mustache. Yeah, uh, Mordenvale turned up with mustaches on their helmets to match his real mustache, which he absolutely thought was hilarious and the best thing ever. But it was the grossest thing seeing all these people with like <laughs> hairy mustaches cable tied to the grills of her <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, there's another one. It's bad enough the king's wearing a porn mo. Now a whole barony. <laughs> yeah, our, that, that stash was, was like that it was intimidating. <laughs> it was that was that was power in that in that. She's not about being mustache. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Let's, take it back. Let's take it back. Yeah, Brian carried the kingdom on that one. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> can be the next uh, big Mortonville award that you come up with is Ooh. the Mortonville Mo. <laughs> 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 somebody who does something memorable and yet scary. <laughs> making notes. <laughs> I so. I do have a, a question for you and it's about traditions um, because these stories have really reminded me of a, an unusual tradition that only happens in your barony at Spring War and that's the cooking of the breakfast. Mm. Can you tell the, the, um, our audience about that? Uh, so th this is the, the breakfast barons and baronesses? Yes. Um, oh, I think it's you know again part let's let's call it part of that service and uh, we you know often at uh, at Spring War maybe a little too much beer gets con or, and other beverages get consumed the night before it's coming back to and, that and, well, because it does yeah um, and maybe it's a little a little hard for a lot of people to get out of bed in the morning um, so that the barons and baronesses um, of of you know and certainly not just Morton Vale from across Lockout. Yeah. Um, will we'll be the ones to get up at 6 a.m. And, and crack the eggs and crack the bacon and cook up the heartiest bacon and eggs uh, mm. uh, meal you've, you've pretty much ever seen. We had a, a barbecue that was about two metres on a side. It's a big square barbie um, and just gets covered in, in mushrooms and tomatoes and bacon and eggs. And, and it's, so a, much it's a bacon. damn good feed. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, and yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely the only breakfast that can... Be cooked by people who have a court barony or yeah, exactly. are landed. Often, yeah, the, the barons of the time, baron and baroness yeah. of the time, will, will be in there. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. you know, I've, I've seen one, you know, literally four coronets are on at each point of the body. I've uh, seen oh, people okay. chased That's, away oh, because they haven't had a court barony. Yeah. Well, if, you if you don't, you know, you, you you sit down and you get fed, right? Don't don't try to be pushing pushing the bees around. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was one of my favourite things to do. I would go to Spring War and help out cooking breakfast. And, and as queen, I pushed my way in there. And then I tagged Macca in, who mm -hmm. didn't have a court barony. 
um, until later that day because we knew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that's an emergency call, Baroning, right? It's just like, <laughs> I want <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, we're crappy cooked. We better make it happen. You know? yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, so the plan was um, I would tag Macarin and he would cook on my behalf. Mm-hmm. Stunt, stunt queen. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah. Buddy, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> My first time cooking on the the baron the, the baronial barbecue at Spring War, I wasn't a court baron. Mm. What happened was Lillian didn't turn up, <laughs> 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 and Gilchrist looked at me and went, "Do you want to cook the barbecue?" And I went, "I don't have a court baronetcy." And he went, "You can be my baroness for the morning and put the coronet oh. on my." Coronet. I remember that. <laughs> And I spent the whole time thinking, I'm going to drop this in the bacon fat. <laughs> and it's not and then she turned up and went, oh, good, you found a ring in and just wandered off. <laughs> 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 so, but it was fun. It really was because at that moment, m- morning, like you, you have a lot of people who are very grumpy, mm-hmm. tired from the night before us activities and having a coronet on your head kind of reminds them that they're supposed to be polite so Gilchrist gave me full leeway to not serve anybody who didn't have manners that morning and uh, I, <laughs> I, was like, Good. I remember that quite clearly mm-hmm. one person didn't use their manners and was turned away quite yes. quickly yeah, and I, I apologize line. for that I'm sorry um... <laughs> so should Bacchus yes your excellency <laughs> So before we finalise the interview, because we are coming to the end of our hour, is there anything that you would like to say to your populace? Um, Well, yeah, thanks for coming along this morning. Um, (laughs) Guys, um, we, you know, uh, thanks for the support. Um, Yeah. We, you know, we're so looking forward to, to, you know, getting active again and, and making and getting back into the swing of things. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, but it's happening. It's happening, it's happening very soon. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us. It has been awesome to, to it's been a lot of reminiscing today. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> Good time. People who are interested in those spring war stories, please approach His Excellency and I'm sure he'll uh, have some wine and some stories to tell you. Yeah. Any you yeah, I, I could tell off camera. Yeah. <laughs> Any that are not PG. Waterville Mo should be directed to Her Excellency. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. The new award that may come in next year. Um, And on that note, I would like to thank everybody for coming to chat with us and the reminiscing of Mordenvale and how wonderful the people are and were. Um, Please make memories with them in the future. They're an amazing group of people Um, with two lovely people sitting on the hot seats at the moment. (laughs) um, Thank you for bringing the known world to bringing the know word closer to us and a little bit uh, making it a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller at the same time. If you like our interviews, please tell us your friends, share or enjoy them. Please stay safe over the next coming months. Um, both Australia and New Zealand have been kicking COVID's ass and we'd like to keep it like that so we can start playing it together again with our friends and family. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, join us next week. Thanks, all. Thanks, B. Thank you. Um, please join all of the Roses next week where we have a very special uh, Ask the Roses session on our Facebook page. There is a link uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask all of the Roses who have been presenting this year. Put your question up there and we'll in- do our best to, to answer away. So yeah. that's next Sunday. Keep an eye out for that. And we have Master Vandal as the host. So that should be entertaining in itself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank, thank you, everyone. You. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.